We talk a lot about normal distribution in Six Sigma, but let's talk a bit about what actually is this distribution and normal distribution stuff. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel, where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And today's video is a bit of a basic knowledge video. It's about the normal distribution or distribution in general. You know, so often we draw this bell curve, Gauss curve, normal distribution thing, and we just ex expect people to know what it is. And probably you've seen it a lot, if, especially if you're following this channel. But just to be sure, I wanted to also share with you, you know, what is it? And perhaps this is also a good video that you can share with other people when you want to explain to them, what is this picture? What, what does it mean? Now for that, we will start with something that is not that picture. And uh, we'll use a uh, a nice random number generator. So I roll a die and it comes up four. I roll it again and it comes up six. I roll it again, it comes up four again. Well, that is maybe a bit strange, but it's chance. Now, if this die would behave absolutely statistically neutral, well, you know that then when I roll six times, I would get each of the six numbers. You also know that in practice, it will not do that. But if I roll 6,000 times, then I will get roughly a thousand ones, roughly a thousand twos, roughly a thousand sixes. That is a distribution. So we draw a number line and then we plot on that how often do we roll this number. Now let's just say that I roll six times and I get a very nicely uh, distributed way of rolling, right? So I roll a one and I roll one, two, and I roll a three. So I roll the same amount of each of those six numbers. What you get now is this is in principle already a histogram. So I make a bar for each of my categories, in this case, the number that I roll on a die is the category. And the bar is as high as the number of times that I get this result. So if I would have rolled 6,000 times, it would be 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, all of them 1,000. And what you get here is what we call a uniform distribution, uniform because they're all the same height. Now this really doesn't look like a normal distribution, now does it? But at least it gets you in the idea of a histogram and a distribution. And I hope that this is you know, a simple one. You, you know a six-sided die. Now, if I add one and we roll two dies, then I can get a bunch of numbers, right? I can get the numbers from two all the way up until 12. But they follow a bit of a different pattern. You see, there is only one way to roll a two. Both my dice need to come up as one. So there's only one chance. Now to get a three, it can be that the first die comes up as a one and the second as a two, or the first as a two, the second as a one. And that might sound like the same, but it is not. There are two possibilities to get a three. To get a four, it can be a one plus a three, a two plus a two, or a three plus a one. So there are three possibilities. And this way, we have a different distribution that I will now put also in a histogram. And again, a histogram is basically a bar chart of how often do I get all of these rolls. So for doing it with two dice, I need to roll at least 36 times. Or again, if I would roll 36,000 times, then we roughly get to this. Now, I didn't draw all the bars here, and that is because you see it already starts to look a little bit like this curve. But in fact, here, this is straight, this is straight. And the, the top one there in the middle, that is seven. If you roll two dice, there are six ways to roll a seven. But you see that even though one single die has a uniform distribution, 
if we take two and we add them together, the distribution also changes shape. Right? So it, it becomes a different type of distribution. Now, when we take a whole bunch of dice, and I don't have 10 of these dice here with me, and I'm definitely not going to roll them all here for you, but let's say we take 10 of these dice. There is a chance that all 10 of them come up as 1. So then we have 10, the minimum value for this distribution. There is only one way that this is possible. There is also a good chance that we'll get to 11. Any one of them can be a 2. So. These are very small ones. What here is the average? Oh, the, the, the maximum here will be 600. The minimum will be 10. In between, we can have all kinds of options, right? So we can roll a bunch of threes and fours, but we can basically roll five threes and, and five fours, but also five twos and five fives. That it all adds up to the same. In fact, if you roll like this, there's a couple million ways to get to 70, but then again, there's even more millions of ways to get to any of the numbers here. Now, if we do this with all of the numbers that we can roll, and we check you know, how many times will we roll it, when we roll 60 million times or so. So when we roll a lot, then our result will get very close to what you would expect statistically to happen. And what we now get is that the distribution will start to look a lot more like that one. In fact, when we get over eight or so dice, you will basically have what we call a normal distribution. And this is also why it is called a normal distribution. So let's rehash, right? A histogram is just a bar chart plotting how often each of the options occurred. When we do it with one die, we get this straight uniform distribution. When we do it with two, we already get this sort of pyramid. When we do it with a lot, and we use 10 for the example, then you see that a bell curve forms. But this bell curve simply means that we have added up all of those possibilities. So we just counted the number of times the dice gave us each of these results between 10 and 60 here for rolling 10 six-sided dice. And when we draw a line over the tops, we get straight, a pyramid, triangle, and the bell curve. And this is what this normal distribution means. So it is a way of plotting how often do all of these categories, all of these values, measurements happen when we just look at thousands of possibilities. Right? We just measure the thickness of an onion, the length of a, the height of a man, things like that. We, we measure it thousands of times and then we get to most of them will center around the mean, but you always get a couple uh, big ones, a couple small ones, something like that. And the fun thing is that if you add a lot of different independent variables, and if you have 10 dice, you know, the one die is not dependent on what the other die rolled, so they are independent. If you get a bunch of independent variables, you end up with a normal distribution. And that is the thing we use so much in Six Sigma. For a normal distribution, we know that two thirds of the values roughly lie between one and two standard deviations. And then we go into the, uh, all the statistics that come with that. That is stuff for another video. But this is what it means. This is what the picture does. The mean line is if you just add up all the values and divide it by the number of rolls, you know, what do you get? Uh, here, 
it, it would be. Three and a half. Here we get to seven. Here we get to, uh, well, 35-ish, 35. Uh, and here, uh, this is a general picture of the normal distribution. This can be all kinds of values. If you're gonna check the height of man in a specific country or all around the world, and you just measure a whole bunch of men, you get this. And armies tend to do this around the world, so you'll get these graphs. But you also get them in industry. You get them anywhere where you have a bunch of variables doing something with your process. But under the graph are basically lots and lots of very small categories that are a histogram of what is happening. And a histogram is just a way to say how often does each of these categories happen? How probable is it that we get a certain value? So that in short is you know, what a histogram is and, and how you get from a histogram to the normal distribution. Now as a small bonus, we've been doing this with six-sided dice. Well, there are all kinds of dice, like a four-sided or eight-sided. There are different ways of having variation. The fun thing is, if you bunch up 10 different types of dice, so that they, they really have a different variability, you still get this picture. If you add up enough sources of variation, they don't have to be the same. They can all be uniform. They can have their own strange distributions. You will get to a normal distribution. So I hope you liked that little explanation. And uh, if you already knew, I'm quite sure you also have some friends or colleagues who've been asking you about what is that thing? What is the picture? Show them this video. For now, I wish you the best of luck in your statistics in Six Sigma. And don't forget to enjoy the continuous improvement journey.